Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to be talking about electrical installations where we can't use the supplier's PME earth connection. And the reason that I want to talk about this is because there are some types of installations where it's not permitted to use uh, the supplier's PME earth and there are some installations where it's not recommended. So what I wanted to do was to discuss that and talk about which types of installations where we can't use it, which installations it's not recommended and where the guidance comes from. So where I talk about a PME system, I'm of course talking about a TNCS system where the suppliers neutral and earth are combined. And these may look slightly different depending on the situations. So for example, um, you may have a electricity supplies cutout and the earth cable may go directly into the side of that. Or if, if you're in a, a flat that's remote from the installation, you might see a separate earth terminal as well. Um, there are particular requirements in BS7671 around, um, around the sizing of bonding conductors and I mentioned this in a previous video. So if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. I'll put a link to my previous video at the end of this video as well. So the concerns about PME have been something that's been discussed in the industry for some time and you may have read articles about it or watched other videos about it and you may be wondering, is there one place where I can go for guidance on the requirements for PME systems or, or is it the case that I have to look in different places to find out what the requirements are? So one tip that I can give you today is that there's a document called the Engineering Recommendation G12-4 and that's produced by the ENA which is the Energy Networks Association and that gives guidance on the use of PME and this document really explains uh, the concerns about PME and so it says a PME earthing terminal provides a satisfactory means of protection for the majority of installations there are however a number of special situations where a PME is not suitable method of earthing in such situations if a PME earth terminal is utilized the rise of voltage on the consumer's earth terminal in the event of a broken neutral may pose an unacceptable risk. In these cases, the consumer must utilize an additional or alternative um, form of protection such as a TT system earthing arrangement by installing a separate earth electrode and fitting appropriate protection in accordance with BS7671 EG and RCD. Where the use of PME is precluded in any consumer's installations or part thereof, the earth metal work of the TT system associated with the use of an RCD or other protection must be segregated from any metal work associated with the PME system. It is not acceptable in these situations to provide an SNE service from a PME since any rise of potential on the neutral of the main will be transferred to the consumer's earth terminal. So that, that really gives you an idea um, of the, the reasons why PME is not is not acceptable in some types of installations. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the installations where we're definitely not allowed to use PME. So first of all, the first two examples are caravans and boats. And this is detailed in the Electricity Supply and Continuity Regulations 2002. So that is a legal requirement. That is something that, that you know the electricity suppliers will will not allow you to connect a caravan or a boat to their PME earthing terminal. And so it makes sense then that those two are mentioned in the Warren regulations as well. So as I mentioned earlier, there are some types of installation where the PME uh, earth is not permitted and there are some where it's not recommended. And there is a list included in the engineering guidance uh, G12-4 and I'll go through that with you now. And the first thing that comes up is construction and demolition sites. Now that, that's an example of where it's not recommended because it's, it's very difficult to comply with the requirements of BS761 um, if, if the supplies are PME earth. So generally what would happen is that you can have a PME to, um, uh, to uh, accommodation buildings, for example, uh, canteens and the like, but it's not recommended on the construction site itself. And so it says here, it's usually impractical to comply with the bonding requirements of BS7671. So here are some more examples of installations where we can't use PME or, in, or it's not recommended. So the first example, exhibition shows and stands. PME shall not be offered if this would allow the connection of PME earth terminal to any metal work of exhibition shows and stands. And then mobile, uh, mobile or transportable units. Temporary electrical installations for structures, amusement devices, and booths at fairgrounds, amusement parks, and circuses. Supplies to temporary buildings, um, agricultural and horticultural premises. Now, you'll probably remember that this is mentioned in uh, BS 761 section 705. Um, in, in those situations, um, I don't think it's precluded, but it's not recommended. And I think there are particular requirements, um, such as I think that it has to be an earth 
metal grid. Um, and the, there are risks uh, particular to agricultural and horticultural premises, which are listed here. Um, and so uh, they include damp locations, possibility of contact with the bo uh, body with true uh, potential and presence of livestock. And there are, there are lots of other um, uh, risks associated with agricultural locations. Um, and they, that they are mentioned in the IET's Guidance Note 7, which is a really, really useful book. I'd recommend anybody have a read of that, especially if you're going to be doing the City and Guilds uh, electrical design course. Um, so then it says here, BS 761 notes that PME brackets TNCS earthing is not recommended where a metal grid cannot be laid on the floor and included in the installation's equipotential bonding. In this case, each building should be provided with its own earthing installation as part of a TT system by installing a separate earth electrode and fitting appropriate protection in accordance with BS7671, for example, an RCD. So that just gives you uh, an idea of an installation where a PME is not recommended, but uh, it's not precluded, provided obviously we, we follow BS7671. So another example is swimming pools and other basins. Um, BS7671 recommends that where PME, brackets TNCS, earthing is adopted, an earth mat or electrode should be used for zone two. And safety, um, safety issues include wet locations, possibility of contact of the body with true earth potential and presence of wet barefooted persons. So I think that's pretty self-explanatory really. And next we go on to caravans, boats, marinas, campsites, and amenity shower blocks, including sports pavilions. Now caravans, as I mentioned earlier, uh, caravans are mentioned in the Electricity Safety, Quality and Continuity Regulations 2002, um, and they preclude the use of PME earthing to a caravan. Supplies to caravans should be from a TT system, utilizing a separate earth electrode segregated from the PME earth and protected by an RCD, which must be provided by the consumer or site owner. And, and then the next thing is caravan sites, campsites, and amenity uh, shower blocks. Due to the higher probability of persons being barefooted at toilet and amenity shower blocks, brackets including sports pavilions and shower facilities, the extension of PME earthing is not recommended unless a buried bonded metal grid has been installed. This requirement also applies to other locations where toilet or shower blocks have been provided for general public use where people are likely to be barefoot, e.g. beachside locations, parks, etc. Where outside showers have been provided, provision of PME earthing is not recommended as providing a reliable equipotential cage may prove impractical. Where no shower area exists nor is likely to exist in a sports pavilion, PMA, um, PME may be offered provided the appropriate metal work is bonded due to the consideration is given to the construction of the building, i.e. wooden or brick construction. So I think that kind of gives us an idea of the concerns around PME installations, where in situations where you've got um, people that are in contact with the general mass of earth, and they may also come into contact with metal work that is connected to the MET in the building, so the main earthing terminal in the building. If that supply was PME and if there was a loss of neutral, that would cause that metal work to rise in potential and, and it, relative to the uh, general mass of earth and can cause uh, a risk of electric shock. So that, that gives us a really good idea as, as to what this is getting at. I don't think this list is, is meant to be exhaustive, um, but it gives you an idea on the scope of the types of installations. And so the next one, also, which I mentioned before, is boats and marinas, um, which is a requirement of the electricity safety, quality and continuity regulations, which preclude the use of the supplier's PME earth terminal to a boat. Supplies to boats should be from a TT system utilising a separate earth electrode segregated from the PME earth and protected by an RCD, which must be provided by the consumer or the site's owner. So the next thing to bear in mind is mobile homes. Now, I think that um, section 721 of uh, the wine regulations covers this, and it states that mobile homes, the general requirement supply, however, for the purposes of the electricity safety quality and continuity regulations as amended, the following, following guidance is given, uh, given here. And it says that for the purposes of this engineering re recommendation, a mobile home is to be treated as a caravan if any metal work connected to the earth terminal is within reach of a person in contact with the general mass of earth or it is not permitted uh, or it is not permanently sited or it is not permanently connected to water or sewerage services. We really get uh, an idea here of, of 
of the types of installation uh, where PME is, is not to be used. And, and so it's, it's basically in situations where a person can be in contact with the general mass of earth and also in contact with the metal work that's connected to the supplier's MET. So in those situations, and if you think of a good recent example, is the introduction of the requirements for electric vehicles. So for electric vehicles, we can't use a supplier's PME earth um, because, you know, if a person is outside and is in contact with the general mass of earth, but then also in touch with uh, the vehicle. Another interesting example is multiple occupancy buildings. Now, I recently had an interesting conversation with somebody from um, a local DNO um, who said to me that whenever they provide a PME terminal, they only provide the uh, the terminal that's incorporated within the um, within the service head. They don't. He said to me that they don't provide earth blocks, and I was like. Hang on a minute, I'm sure I've seen PME uh, situations where there is an earth block. And the reason for this is because where I work, we have lots of blocks of flats. And in situations where you've got a PME supply to, uh, to the origin uh, of the installation within a block of flats, and then you've got, say, a Ryefield panel, and then uh, sub-mains to the individual flats, you'll have a PME situation at the origin but the supplies to the individual flats will be have a, a separate neutral earth and you'll have an earth block there. And the reason for this is to prevent the possibility of circulating neut neutral currents in the metal work in the installation. And it's mentioned here in the engineering rec recommendation. Um, and, and it says here that there are a number of issues with regards to the application of PME with multiple occupancy buildings, a particular requirement for an end of it, um, main uh, electrode and problems associated with neutral currents flowing within structural steelwork. So whilst the PME supply may be provided at the main intake, PME is not generally re recommended for distribution within multiple occupancy buildings, including multi-storey and single-storey buildings. In providing an earth terminal, reference should be made to uh, e EREC G87. Now that is a, a specific recommendation with regards to multiple occupancy buildings. And so, so you'll have a situation where you've got a PME earth at the origin, You'll have a, a panel such as a, a rifle panel or maybe just a service head. And then you'll have sub mains or, or lateral mains, they may be referred to, to the individual flats. And then in the flat, you'll see a separate earth terminal there. Now it's still PME, but the, the supply from the origin to the flat is an s &E, so separate neutral earth. And then you'll have the separate earth block. So that's why um, I was slightly surprised to hear someone say to me that, you know, that they never provide earth blocks in PME situations because there are some there are some subtle differences in the, depending on the type of insulation and particularly in blocks of flats um, like that, you don't have the, the combined um, neutral earth throughout the distribution. Um, it's only into where it comes into the building. So there are some general requirements to bear in mind as well. In my previous video, I spoke about earthing and bonding and how to size uh, earthing conductors and bonding conductors. And so there are different requirements when sizing conductors on a PME installation. And this is for the reason that I gave earlier, that the potential for the rise and potential of the earthing uh, conductors connected to the supplier's PME earth in the event of a loss of neutral. So we have to bear in mind the requirements for, for bonding in BS7671 and any, uh, any other requirements when the situation is a PME. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please click on the subscribe button and the notification bell to be the first to hear about future videos.